Hello guys, this is Just One Guy and I'm back here with another Unity tutorial and in today's tutorial we're going to be creating a multi-page inventory. Now the good thing about this inventory is these are all the buttons you need and when you hit up and down it goes to the next page of the inventory. Now let's just get, go in game and see how it works. Now I set all the uh, items that have a number for its name. So each of these buttons represent an the item. They are connected to the inventory items, but for now, just for uh, convenience sake, they're displaying the numbers. Now I think I have 99 items, and if I hit up, oh, sorry, that's the scene view. This is the game view right here. If I hit up, you can see I go to item 70 or 79. If I hit up again, it shows all the way up to item 98. Uh, it, there is 99 items. But the first item is zero. So if we go back down, you can see. And if I hit up again, it won't actually uh, cause an error or anything. It'll just reset it. it. Goes back to one. And if I hit down again right there, it, it won't go past zero. So you won't get any errors that way. And that's what we're going to be creating today. This is a good inventory because you never have to uh, worry about buttons, uh, designing the UI buttons that much because once you design these buttons that's the full inventory so you never have to worry about pages, uh, UI buttons that you have to instantiate at runtime or uh, UI buttons that you have to place and they might go out of order somewhere out of the UI somewhere let's just delete all this so we can so I can show you how I created it Now the, the thing about uh, my recording software is it won't show the uh, buttons like right here. Well, it won't show other menus like right here. I hit the asset menu, but it, it's probably not showing the uh, create and everything like that. It's a little bit of an issue, but uh, I'll just narrate what I did just to make sure you understand. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is create a canvas. So we go to UI canvas. And I just created a canvas if you, uh, the, the little menu thing didn't pop up. And that's just the UI canvas. Next, we want to put a panel inside of it. In fact, let's delete the canvas and just create the panel directly. And create, where's the panel? And that's going to be the background for our uh, image probably put something a little bit lower just to make it a little look a little bit more like a menu and we're gonna go into the image up the what is it alpha yeah that was a bit brighter next we're gonna create uh, you know, matter of fact uh, let's Let's just control Z that because we do need this to be light now that I remember. And let's create another panel inside this panel. And just make that a little bit smaller. Now this is the panel that we need to be uh, bright. So I'm just going to up the alpha all the way up. And now we're just going to create an image. Put that image up here, stretch it out a bit, and this is going to be our title. So we put the text right here, make sure the title matches the image a bit. And we're going to align it and hit best fit, and we're just going to name this inventory. Next thing we're going to do is go back to our first panel and we're going to create another panel and this is going to be the panel that holds all the buttons so this is the important panel. I'm going to right here create this panel. Now I so said this time we're going to go back to the uh, canvas. We're actually going to make this panel black just so it stands out a bit. 
and we're gonna go back to the canvas and just show you uh, so you don't have any issues with uh, the screen scaling we're just gonna go to screen selling it uh, screen scaling and set this uh, scale with screen size and we're gonna set that to 0 0.5 if you don't do that, you'll have some uh, issues when you scale the screen to different sizes with the buttons because the buttons are going to be controlled by a script, a layout script. And we, from there, we see we need to reposition a little tight uh, nameplate. And I'm just going to change the anchors. Sometimes I find this helps. And if I just position the anchors where I want them to be directly and reposition the anchor for the uh, panel right there and just test it out make sure everything's good let's hit uh, maximize the screen and everything scales correctly uh, now we're going to create the buttons I'm just going to go inside here and create a button And now we're going to go to the panel, that's the button holder, and we're going to add a component that's a layout component called Grid Layout Group. And this is going to do all the positioning for the buttons so we don't have to. Now we're just going to, I like to uh, put it on the upper center, well not, we should put it with upper left. And I think all this is okay. We'll change it later. Now we're just going to duplicate the button a hundred, uh, not a hundred times, but as many as we could. I'd say probably 30. And I'm going to do 29 just because uh, it starts at zero. So it's 30 buttons all together. Now let's just make them fit into the panel. A bit of space in here. I want the spacing. Shrink the size of the buttons. Or well, actually make them a, a bit wider. And the height of them. And we're going to change that column flexibility to fix rules. And I think I'm going to make four rules. Eh, doesn't really work. Let's try five. Yeah, that works. Okay. Now let's just uh, play with the buttons a bit to make them fit. And uh, right. Ooh, wrong child alignment should be uh, middle center. There we go. And we have our buttons here for the most part. Now we have to, uh, have to make the panel a little bit smaller. Just because we got to put our up and down buttons on the side. So we want to have space for those. And make the buttons width a little uh, less. Okay, close the panel. Now go to our uh, outer panel. I'll just name this uh, panel right here, button holder. Just so we can keep track of that panel and we'll name this uh, the menu okay now let's put our up and down buttons we're just going to go to the menu and we're going to create a button under it and that button's hard to see because it's behind the button holder but it doesn't really matter. Okay. Just bring that over here. And I'm going to change. What is that? The anchors. Yeah, just to pull it over here. Just so it's always space right. Uh, when I scale the screen differently. And we're going to go to the text. And we're going to put up and we're just gonna put best fit just so we can see it now we're gonna duplicate that button zoom out a little bit 
and bring the duplicated button over and we're gonna bring the anchors over and now we're gonna name that duplicated button down now normally you want to change these so all the text will be the same size but this is just a tutorial and that's not really the purpose of it so we're gonna do we're just gonna leave it like that and that's pretty much it for the UI setup now we have to go to the scripts and I already have these two scripts here but I'm gonna just delete them so I can recreate them again just to uh, show you everything now the first script we're gonna uh, be creating is the item class so we're just gonna create a c-sharp script and name it item class this item class is gonna be the actual script that holds the item and so now we're gonna open up model development just click on it okay guys now we're in model development first thing we're gonna do is delete all of this right here we don't need to start and we don't need to update next we're gonna delete the model behavior because we just want this to be a regular class now we just need two variables uh, public string item name which will be the name of the item And we need a public ID, which will be how we find the item. This is going to be the unique identifier for each item within the uh, player's inventory. And that's going to be an int, and it's going to go item ID. save that and that's going to be it for our item script that's all we need there okay now we're back here in unity and the second script we're going to create is the character inventory so just create a c-sharp script uh, stuck for a minute there and name it character inventory And now we're going to open a model development and start writing our script. These are the only two scripts we're going to need for this. Okay, now the first thing we need to do is grab the Unity Engine uh, UI. And this will just allow us to access all the UI variables. So first we're using Unity Engine. dot UI okay the second thing we need is a list this is going to be the inventory class that holds all the players items uh, almost wrote that in the wrong place okay we'll make this a public list and we'll grab our in uh, character inventory Oh no, sorry. Yeah, it is the character inventory. Okay. Uh, and that's going to be the inventory class we created before. And we're just going to create one of those and call it inventory. And this is going to be the player's inventory. Now I'm just going to delete these uh, start and update functions so they don't get in the way. I'm just gonna say characters or well, players inventory.
Now, the way I use the script is I use it for the uh, player and the uh, enemies and the NPCs, but that's beyond the scope of this tutorial. Uh, right now, we're just going to use it for the player. The next thing we need to do is get the buttons. Those buttons we created before, we're going to save them all in the inventory script, uh, so we need to get those right now. So we're just going to put public, and we're going to create another list. And this is going to be a list of buttons. We're just going to do U the UI button. Uh, and we're going to name it Inventory Buttons. Inventory Button. Okay. We got all the buttons. And the uh, player's inventory. Okay, the next thing we need is a page number. Now, this page number is going to let us know uh, which page items that we want to show. Do we want to show the first page of items, which will be items 1 through 30? Or do we want to show the second page, which will be... Uh, I believe, well, actually, it's going to be 0 through 29, and then uh, 30 through, what, uh, 60, no, 59. Because uh, the way the items start is they start from 0 instead of 1. So even though it'll be 30 items, you're starting from 0, so it'll, be, it'll read as 29. But functionally, it's all the same. The player's never going to see the difference in it. So we're just going to get public. Int page number and, uh, the page of items I find it's good to write a description of the variables which you're uh, typing out and this is uh, for the future because a lot of times you'll come back in the script after a couple of months and you won't remember what some of these variables mean even though you named them right and it's just good to have a little description just uh, so you know what you wrote there so that's why I always make sure to write a description next to the variable so I never forget the next thing we're going to need is the number of buttons plus the page number now this uh, it's just, uh, this integer is just going to represent the page number uh, added to the number of buttons we have. So it's basically the page one plus 30 buttons. Okay, public int page number uh, plus number of buttons. Okay gonna write that out oops damn it keep hitting shift <laughs> now the reason we need that number is that'll tell us uh where we should what we should be displaying uh, inside the inventory that's the number we'll need to navigate the uh, inventory and we have one more variable but uh, I'll wait uh, until I finish the script to add that one because it takes an old explanation now we're gonna do uh, let me just make sure it's right uh, we're gonna do our fo uh, first function which is show all buttons now we're just going to hit public void, show all buttons, and I always accidentally capitalize the other L, so let's just make that lowercase. <clears throat> and what this function is going to do, uh, make that uh, H lowercase too, uh, what this function is going to do is determine which buttons we should be showing at which time. Now, first thing we're going to do is write a for loop for the uh, buttons in the inventory. So we can go through each button, the UI buttons in the inventory. 
So let's just do that now. Four inch. That count is the the total number of uh, in a in a list. So we're accessing the button list, and we're saying dot count. So we're saying the total number of buttons uh, in the inventory list. I mean, in the UI buttons list. So essentially, all the buttons that we just created, that's what we're grabbing, and we're going through it now. And button. Plus. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to turn off all the buttons. So we just go inventory buttons and we go button. So we're just going through the list and we're turning all the buttons off. We're going to game object dot set active equals false. Now we're just going to go back in Unity and make sure that works. So let's just hit save. Now the way I save is with the uh, shortcuts. So I just hit control S. If I did it with the menu, it wouldn't show up anyway. It'll show up on my end, but uh, the recording software wouldn't show wouldn't show it. So uh, I'll just use the shortcuts anyway. Okay, now we're back here in Unity. So let's just go to our third person uh, controller. Let's just move it, remove this script because this is from before. And what we're going to add is our character inventory script. So we go to, to our player and we give them the character inventory. Which I believe is the right script. And now, uh, almost forgot well we have to go back into uh, model development I forgot a simple but important function which is going to be our start function so we go public void start and we're just going to call that function we just wrote which is show all buttons and we're going to save and go back into unity Okay, we're back here in Unity, and now we're going to go to the third person controller, and we're just going to hit uh, start, I mean uh, play, and we'll hit play, all our buttons should disappear. Wait, oops, forgot one more thing. We're going to have to hit, the, uh, hit this lock thing right here, so we can lock the menu. Go in here, inside the button panel, button holder panel, uh, collect all the buttons. and just put them inside our uh, inventory buttons now all the inventory buttons is inside uh, our uh, list so now when we hit play they should all turn off and we got what we wanted it's working correctly you can see if we turn this uh, character inventory script off the buttons are here so right now the first thing we're saying is uh, just go through and turn all the buttons off. Let's go back into model development and keep writing. <coughs> okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go through each and every one of the player items. So we're going to create a for loop that goes through each and every one of the items in the player inventory. So just to speed things up, I'm just going to copy this for loop right here and change a few things. I'm going to paste it right here. And just so we don't get any errors right now. Okay, now what did I have to change? I'm going to change button right here to item. Copy. And just paste that where it need be. And we're going to change inventory buttons to inventory. And 
now we have a for loop that goes through and gets uh, every one of the player's items. And let me just make sure I got this right. We're going to say if item minus the page number in a uh, page, page plus the number of buttons equals button you oh, hit the wrong button there <laughs> and huh. oh I see what went wrong uh, I just gotta delete that and break it down here <laughs> that's what I was doing wrong okay there we go and now all we're gonna do is uh, make the button appear so we're just gonna copy this button right uh, this line of code that makes the button disappear and we're gonna paste it right here and instead of saying false we're gonna say true Now what this is going to do is every button that's, uh, that, I mean every item is only going to turn on the same amount of buttons that uh, we have in our items inventory. So if we have five items, it's going to show five buttons. And that's just the basic code right here. It's actually going through it so anything we want to access with the items, we could do it right now. But let's just go back in Unity and I'll show you how it works. Okay, I just realized the mistake I made uh, in the beginning when I wasn't paying attention. And it, up here, instead of character inventory, it should be item class. Yeah. This So far, the script would work, but instead of uh, inventories, it'll show you, uh, I mean, instead of items, it would have showed you a uh, character inventory. Uh, but now let's just go back into the Unity so we, I can show you how it works. Forgot one more thing too. Just so this will show up in the inspector, we have to put system dot serializable, and that'll make it. Uh, wait, not right here. Sorry. We need to put it on our item class. That way, our items are able to show up in the inspector, and we're just gonna save and go back into Unity. Okay, now we're in Unity, and we're just going to go to the third person player, which is our player object. And we're going to go to the character inventory script, and under the inventory, now that it's able to show up and uh, we have everything in here, we're just going to put five items. Now when I hit play, you can see it shows you five buttons representing five items. Now, if I turn this off, you can see all the buttons just show. And that's what we wanted. We have five items. We're showing five buttons. Now, let's go back into uh, model development and write the rest of it. Okay, we're back in model development. And now, I'm just going to put a line of text so we can... Uh, show what button uh, each item which button uh, each button belongs to each item so it's just going to show a number for each item and let's just say inventory button uh, dot get component we're going to get the text of the button uh, the tech the ui text of the button just make sure it's right that's what that's what I was doing wrong. Uh, button okay. Dot get component. Uh, text. And we're just gonna say that equals to item uh, plus a string. And we're just gonna save that. And now we're just going to write the up and down functions. 
this uh, will let us turn the page up and turn the page down. So let's just go over here. And right here, we're going to write public void move uh, button. Uh, no. Move page up. And the first thing we're going to say is we're just going to do a little uh, bit of uh, error fixing. And this is to stop the page from going. Uh, when you hit the up button, this is to stop the page from just getting any errors or doing anything stupid like showing you a blank page so it's gonna say if the page number is what less than one then the page number equals one and we're gonna do the same thing for the uh, page number of buttons Now we're just going to say the page number of buttons equals the inventory button dot count uh, times the page number. And that'll help us keep track on uh, what items we should be showing on screen. Now we're going to do the same thing, except we're going to say move page down. Public void. Down. And I'm just going to copy this so I don't have to write it over again because that would be monotonous. And I believe that code should be the same. And oh, I actually forgot to put something right here. Uh, we're gonna want to up the page number, so we put page number plus plus, and then we call the function show all buttons. And the reason we need to do that is because the function isn't calling all the time, so. Uh, we reset all the numbers of the page numbers we need because we pressed up and then we show all the buttons and the show all the buttons uh, function automatically calculates which uh, inventory items should be shown at that point in time. Okay. And we need to go up here and put this, we're just going to copy this code right here. And on the move down function, we need to put it above uh, the page number errors function. And we need to change uh, page plus plus to page minus minus. So that would just say minus one page instead of plus one page. And instead of saying, and we need to change this too to page number of buttons plus the inventory count instead of the uh, page number oh sorry minus the inventory count I meant the inventory button count sorry and we just make sure this is alright and we call our show buttons function at the end and that should be good now one more error thing we need to uh, put in here is that last uh, variable I was talking about and this is to stop the pages from going too high so you put public hit last 
page. I'm oh, sorry, let's just make that a full. And this makes sure that when we get to the last page, we don't go past it. Alright, what we're going to do here is, when we get to the end of the items, uh, the, the last number of items in our inventory, what we want to do, if the player presses uh, the up button again, we want the menu to reset, and that's what this is going to be doing now. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into our show all buttons function, and right here, we're just going to say if item equals inventory dot count. Oops, sorry, let's put a V there. Minus one. It's minus one because we start at zero instead of one. So if we just said inventory dot count, uh, we'll go to the last item we have. And since the last item starts at zero, and uh, the way we're doing it, the items start at one. It, it's it's going to cause you an error, so you need to put minus one right there. It's essentially it's never going to find the last item because the uh, inventory starts at zero and the items I believe start at one. So we're just going to put hit last page equals true. And we're going to go into our move uh, move page out function. And we're just going to say if hit last page. And we're just going to reset the page number to 1 the first page and the page uh, number of buttons is going to equal zero and we're going to call our show uh, all buttons functions and we're going to reset the hit last page to false and just so we don't call any of this code we're going to make it an else statement so if hit last page is false, uh, that's when we're going to call the rest of the code so the button will act as normally. And I believe that is it. Let's just go into Unity and make sure everything's correct. Let me save it. Okay, now we're here in Unity and I have my first error. I know what I did wrong, but I'm just going to show you. And it's not working, and we get this error, no reference. Uh, what is that, line 31? And I'm going to show you what I did wrong. Uh, let's just head back into Mono Development. And we're back in here in Mono Development, and it's a simple mistake. Line 31, instead of uh, get component text, I should have put get component in children because the text uh, component is going to be a, child, a child of the button so that's what we want to get instead of get component and let's head back into uni let's first save okay we're back here in unity and first let's just hit play so I can show you the first thing we did now the first thing we did was uh, we named all the buttons which is one uh, zero one two three so that's the item place in uh, the place in it, the inventory. So it was 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So that just shows that. So we can differentiate uh, which button we need. And we can show that each button is going up and down. That's going to become uh, later after the next. Uh, that's going to become important after the next step that we do. Now we need to grab our up button. And let me just unlock the panel that I had locked before. And we're going to go down to the button script. And we're going to press uh, plus to add a function. We're going to get our third person character, which will be our player. And we're going to go down to our character inventory script. You probably can't see this part, but uh, just go to this no function part. 
and then select the character inventory script that we just wrote and then select the move page up now let's hit play and we'll just go back out instead of five items to test this we need about 99 so now we have 99 items I'm just gonna close that so we can hit play now and hopefully it'll work and it is working you can see this is displaying items 30 through 59 uh, 60 through 89 and uh, 90 through 98 uh, as, as I said before 98 is actually the last item you have 99 items but they start at 0 so it's going from 0 to 98 instead of 1 to 99 and if we hit up again it resets it and it goes back to normal now let's just grab our down button and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go to the button script, hit the uh, add a function, bring in our third person character, which is our player, go to the character inventory script. And this time we're going to get the move uh, page down. So you can see it says the character inventory move page down just uh, because the menus are not going to pop up in the recording software. <laughs> so now let's hit play. And we can see if we go up, we can now go down. So we got 0 to 29. Oops, sorry. That's another thing. You can't go down below 0. So our, uh, we error proofed it. And that's basically it. You got an inventory, a multi-page inventory that can go up and down now. Now I'll be placing the scripts in the description down below just in case you want to download scripts and don't feel like watching the video. But uh, if you don't and you just download scripts, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. Okay, one quick thing I forgot to do. This is part one of uh, the inventory script. I'm going to do a bunch of other tutorials to show you how to... Uh, get a more in-depth inventory but uh, for right now I meant to change this to uh, dot item name Look at this. Wait a Let me see. Uh, inventory button Wait, inventory I believe it's inventory button item name and this will just make sure every button has the name of the item you put instead of the place in the inventory the, the numerical place in the inventory so let's go back to unity and I can show you and now we're back here in unity and I can show you we go to the third person controller and instead of 99 items all we need is five let's go back to that and we're going to change this name to Black Sword. And you can see if I press play now, we have five items, and our first item is named Black Sword. Uh, now, in the next part of this tutorial, what I'm going to show you is how to uh, equip the items or how to do something with the items once you uh, click the button because we're going to need another script for that you can do it right uh, uh, if you just access the, the button right now but uh, the way you need to do it to do more in-depth stuff is add a script to the button so it copies the item and stuff like that but that's it for today thank you for watching